Hello everyone, a warm welcome to the Scandinavian Female Empowerment Summit. Janek and I are so happy that you are joining us and that you are taking time out of your schedule to give yourself the gift of letting yourself learn and be inspired by these amazing female Scandinavian teachers who will all share their journeys and also provide tools and strategies on how to manifest our deepest dreams and desire with feminine power and through the heart. Today our focus on the interviews is the body. And with us today from Norway, we have Lynn Stocke. Lynn used to work as an artist, actress, author, singer and a composer. And now she works as a mentor and do talks and workshops. Her focus area is how to treat stress and traumas. And she also does mindfulness and yoga teaching. Welcome, Lynn. Nice to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> how are you? Oh. I'm doing quite good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I really have been looking forward to meet you here at the Skype interview and to let you talk about how to treat traumas. To me, it's a totally new area, uh, which I don't know much about. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to talk to you, because I guess be on earth with uh, traumas in our body prevent us to unfold our inner potential. Yes. Maybe I'm right. We will find out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But as I just mentioned today, we will talk about what is traumas and how can we release those in our body because I think it has a huge impact on our well-being. But first of all, I would like to ask you if you will share your own story. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I know that a lot of people may be tuning in today are interested in this thing because they might have stress and trauma so I just would like if you don't mind just to take a moment just for everybody tuning in just to feel themselves and become very present where they are right now and just feel uh, feel the body very physically on the chair and just look around and allow some time to to arrive to this moment and just sense into uh, what's going on in the body and the thoughts and just things coming and going. Just feeling the heart, what's going on in your heart right now and allowing it all to be. And maybe touching the heart with the hand physically and and just uh, as a way of accepting yourself as you are and a way of saying this is me, my experience right now and it's okay. So um, when my story Um, well, it's it's uh, to make it short. <laughs> mm. I grew up as a happy little girl, <laughs> and uh, very early I made a career at the National Theatre in uh, in Oslo, uh, where I played a lot of uh, characters and uh, for fifteen, sixteen years, and and that's also where I met my husband. Um, And uh, when I was uh, 26 years old, uh, uh, we were expecting our second son, Mikkel, and uh, my husband died in a car accident together with his father. So that was really making it short, but it's it's really changed uh, my whole life um, that day. And Uh, my values and my direction was completely uh, changed. So um, I already worked somehow into yoga and meditation and uh, wondering about our uh, how how we tick. But then I started to study medicine, uh, mind body therapy, nutritional therapy, and finally I came into trauma therapy. So I guess as a very young woman, 
you yourself had a huge trauma uh, losing your husband and your daddy. Yeah, it was his daddy. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that was uh, really impacting my life. Mm. But you know, I see also that there's we all have traumas, mm. yeah. uh, but we have a, also I have more traumas. We all have different ones, big and smaller ones. But that was really impacting my life. Yeah. Yeah. Change completely, yes. Yeah, of course. And now you mentioned that we all do have traumas, and maybe you can try to explain because I've read somewhere that we actually have. I, I don't like saying small or big traumas because I think a, a trauma is a trauma, but I do know that there are different kinds of traumas. So maybe you will try to explain how we get a trauma. Well, uh, yeah, where to start? Um, you mean the different kinds of trauma? Because trauma is really uh, uh, when our um, system is uh, being overwhelmed mm. by something. It's it's defined as something that happens too too much, too fast, too soon. And, and you know, it could be a big thing or a minor thing. It depends on you know our nervous system. It could already be vulnerable, you know, and then a small thing could be a big thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's something that overwhelms us and overrides the ability to, to integrate an experience that we're having. Mm -hmm. And then the fine self-regulation that we have in our nervous system gets compromised. So, so uh, the energy that we mobilize in a trauma in the situation stays within the body and then can create a lot of symptoms. So what you are saying also is that if we have experienced a trauma which hasn't been released, we will be it will be more likely that we will have a new one because our because our system is already stressed. Well, we are definitely more vulnerable mm. when we are in holding a trauma, unresolved trauma, chronically. Mm. Mm. You no, know, because we have a lot of stress um, hormones uh, flooding our bodies, uh, you know, yeah. draining our bodies, making us, it's difficult to be present in our lives. It's so often difficult to relate and have healthy relationships. Mm. So, so having that going on, you know, it's, it's like the trauma itself is kind of asking for a resolution, you know, it kind of comes up in different ways, you know, keep coming up to try to be healed in a way, you know, ask to be healed, yeah. absorbed, because I think it's something in our body that is really designed for healing. And there's so much support in our bodies um, on all levels to, to heal. Mm. So, um, yeah. And now talking about what is a trauma, I read somewhere that Of course, I guess that being in an accident or getting raped, something else which might be a huge thing will, of course, make a trauma in you. But also small things, like if you are going to the hospital as a kid, I know it's not a small thing, but there is some different kind of traumas, right? Yeah, mm. well... well Uh, the ones I work with, you know, I have a specialization in shock traumas, mm. which are with SC therapy, which is, uh, um, and also development and relational traumas. So mm. that, that's kind of difference. But the shock traumas, if you want me to to talk a little bit of each of them, you know, it's, it's a shock trauma. It's something that happens at a specific time and place, you know. Mm. So a rape, accident, sudden loss. Of a person that you love, it could be it could be also being at the hospital, you know, experiencing something. Mm. But in a shock trauma, you it happened a specific time and place, so you have some information, mm. and uh, so so it's actually the impact of an acute devastating incident that leaves the individual mm. uh, kind of frozen in, in the time that it happened, in fear sometimes, and and, and frozen in that time and. And so the aim of that therapy is to support the individual to come out of that response yeah. and into the here and now, you know, to be present with, with the here and now. Mm. And uh, and also that, you know, a lot of that survival energy that the body mobilizes uh, through um, an, uh, 
critical incident. You know, it needs to be discharged and integrated as a part of the individual's healthy life force again. Okay. So it can be very draining to hold the trauma in the body because it takes a lot of energy to hold it, you know. Yeah. Then you have the developmental traumas, uh, which leads to relational traumas, which is not one single traumatizing event, but rather ongoing experience of neglect, abuse, misattunement often from one of the uh, caregivers. And, uh, you know, studies show that neglect from humans is far more devastating for us than events happening from a non-human human source. And this has often been going on for years, so it's a little bit more unclear, you know, but it causes an ongoing uh, nervous system activation and mm. forms chronic patterns and beliefs of life, you know, that leads to development, developmental immaturity and on certain parts of life. It doesn't have to be in all parts, but it can be in certain parts of life. So, so you know, what, what the, the aim of the therapy in that is often to restore, you know, that what was lost in that, you know, yeah. rebuild trust, rebuild connection, you know, and and learn to trust our own needs and, and, and speak for ourselves. And, you know, we can have different um, pieces that needs to be restored. So what you are saying, because this really surprised me, that being in, for instance, a family with, with parents who uh, are not able to take care of their own kids will make traumas as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean... I mean, for a child uh, to to not be met you know, or be ne de neglected, you, you know, it, it causes a lot of stress yeah. in the system, you know. It reaches out for connection. It's natural, you know. And then when it's not met, it can cause enormous harm. Uh, and and what sometimes happens is that the child turns, turns it against oneself, you know. I must be bad. I, yeah. I can't deserve this. You know, it's shut down and uh, disconnect from all needs, you know, um, or, you know, will not have growing up and will not have more needs than what the environment can provide, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I, I see, you know, sometimes grown-ups do that as well, you know, as you grown up, you don't really, you step into a family, you have a family and you, you kind of give your own needs away all the time, you know, and I think a lot of people can relate to that, a lot of women can relate to that too yeah exactly so what i'm also hearing you saying is that because this is as you just mentioned it is st stressful to be in a family not taking care of your needs uh, so being stressed uh, with a lot of people face today will also um, could make traumas in your in your life Yes, uh, the the regular stress you mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you may, I mean, when you grow up, you know, and you don't are met with a with a firm eyes, with a heart, uh, with a connection, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of build your life on a not very solid ground. You get very vulnerable for for in life. You know, it's it's difficult to tolerate stress. It's difficult to learn when you go to school. You kind of have a groundwork that is is not very solid. You know, it's very vulnerable. And then when you come out in life and life uh, has a lot of stress, that's even more harmful because your stress tolerance is really compromised. Yeah. So if you have that as a, as, as a child, of course, that will affect your ability to, to, to tolerate stress as a, as a grown-up. But also uh, another shock trauma will, can also do that. Yeah. But I think also it's important to say that stress in itself uh, is uh, something that is also very good and that we, we have healthy stress mm. yeah. you know that yes. that helps us grow and develop mm. and and this is the stress that i love actually I, di i didn't at the time i was resolving my own trauma i i had no stress tolerance at all <laughs> but i learned to grow my ability to to tolerate and and now i enjoy you know a healthy stress where i go into life i have 
workshops I have you know on stage and uh, it challenges me to raise to the occasion and my system is working it's self-regulating again you know and yes. I live a life in balance but I need to watch that so I don't override myself because then then I go into a dysregulation again yeah for sure Lynn, I, I read on your website that uh, there was one more kind of traumas, and that's relation traumas. Could you somehow try to explain what that is and the difference between relations and development traumas? Well, developmental traumas causes relational traumas later because mm. it's difficult when you have not been met with a, with a healthy connection Uh, love and uh, your core needs, learn to tune with yourself. Mm. You know, it's very difficult to tune to in relationships uh, later in life. And yeah. and for for children that, you know, we long for a relationship, but some for growing up when the relationship was disconnected or maybe hurtful, you know, it's very difficult to... to to be an adult and long for a relationship that you at the same time feel as dangerous yeah. because it's the old trauma been going on. So that really shows how important it is to, to, to see that and be oriented to what's truly going on in your life and so that you can uh, unlock it and un, uh, uh, separate it from your life that is truly going on now as an adult, you know? Yeah, yeah. So this is how it affects our mind and subconsciousness. But I'm also interested in how does a trauma affect our body? Uh, you mean in the traumatic experience itself mm. or chronic? Yeah, I guess if you have this shock trauma, as we just mentioned, your body will be frozen and you will have a lot of fear. And I guess that in that moment... Yes, your body will frozen, but what will happen afterwards? Will this? Yeah, well, so you know, I, I think it's good to know one thing that it's you know we have we are designed for life. I think that's really important to to understand that we have a nervous system and a body that's really uh, designed to survive mm. and and designed for always keeping us in balance if it's not overwhelmed. And uh, so we have, you know, if we cut ourselves, everything works to, to repair the cut. You know, we can eat a lot of junk food and the body is really <laughs> trying to restore what we did without yeah. know, <laughs> even noticing, you know. Mm. And, uh, and the same with the nervous system, that it's really designed to, to experience uh, existential experiences and then restore itself into uh, equilibrium again. So we have this... Uh, beautiful, uh, natural uh, regulation, self-regulation. So when we experience a, a life-threatening event, event that we experience as a life-threatening, mm -hmm. the body immobilizes a lot of energy, you know, to get us out of it. Mm. So it's really like whew, into the whole system. It's fantastic. You know, and and it, the body's the brain tries to orient what is going on. How do I get out of this? You know, and then we go into the fight or flight response that we need to survive. You know, yeah. and when that works fine and we got out of the situation, it's completed, and then, then the brain and the body just need some time to maybe shake. You know, it's uh, our body's natural you know, uh, discharge, you know, to shake and the brain needs to integrate what happened and then we're fine. <sighs> But when trauma happens and this self-regulating mechanism of the body is compromised or overwhelmed or disrupted, you know, the, the energy, this enormous amount of energy gets stuck in the body. And that's when we get the trauma, you know, it's, it's really... And in SC therapy or in therapy in general, I think we say that it's really stuck in the sauce muscle, you know. So it's really to get to that, those tensions in the body can really release a lot mm -hmm. too. So, but then, you know, it, it takes a lot of energy to have that in the body and hold it down. So when we have that unresolved, you know, we have this chronic flow of stress hormones and, and so on that really can create a lot of... Uh, 
disruption and um, imbalance in our bodies. Mm. And uh, it's, it's really, uh, it's really not uh, healthy. <laughs> and also in our relationships, you know. Mm. I think it's interesting because, as you just mentioned, our body wants us to survive. So it's it actually acts very um, in a good way when we face a kind of shock yeah. traumas. But what is interesting, in my opinion, is why don't we? I mean, I, I read the book with Peter Devine, who has worked with traumas as well, as well. And yeah, he, what that's he meant, <laughs> and is my background, SE therapy. Yeah. Yeah, and what what he notices is or was that uh, the animals are doing this shake work to uh, to get rid of the energy. But I wasn't aware that that we could do that as human as well. So is this a kind of habit we've forgotten, since we don't do it? We do it. But uh, for me, this was very interesting to see uh, myself because I remember having giving birth and in a mm. little bit traumatic situation. And uh, at the hospital, when I my body started to shake, you know, and uh, everybody at the hospital was like, "Oh, we have to give her something for the shaking," mm. which is was it was it would have been so good with the knowledge that if somebody had come to me and said, "Wow, this is so good, Lynn." Your body, you know, your body's restoring itself. It shake, let it shake, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because this is the way we restore. You no, know? and also that I've learned later because uh, I think it's important to know, like uh, first aid, how, how do we can we help ourselves and each other yeah. when we are with each other when in, in trauma or ourselves, you know, and. And uh, how important it is to understand that, you know, we need to, if we have had a shock, to restore a sense of calm, a sense of peace, to take something around our shoulders, to have, to really allow the body to realize that the event is over, you know, we have survived, to calm down, and if we shake, that it's so good, you know, mm. and, and to, to be present, you know, all this can help our nervous system to not... Uh, be traumatized by an event. I myself was raped as a very young girl, and and what my experience was that that I guess that because it was so difficult for my parents to uh, to meet me, they start doing a lot of practical stuff because it was hard for them as well as it was hard for me to face this what have happened, and that actually prevent me from from release this stress in my own body it's not that i'm blaming my parents at all but because it their way of acting uh, didn't help me yeah sorry to hear that and, and so often we are not met in, <laughs> in a confident way in life no no, no. So. so actually if as you just mentioned if you if you are with a person who have experienced a shock trauma the best thing is to uh, just be with them take care of them uh, so the body will realize that, as you mentioned, the danger is not here anymore and you are safe and and eventually the body may, may actually start shaking to get rid of all this energy. Yes, I think, you know, to just to support, uh, you know, to, to have a firm eyes to look into, you know, that there's somebody that is really there, present, and, uh, and to... Um, have a, restore a sense of safety and allow the body to shake and it's not dangerous because people can be scared of that too you know yeah, exactly. so, so uh so i think that's that's uh, really something uh, important uh, we can do to help ourselves as well and also to to be present i think uh, that's very important so we're not stuck in anything to to tune into here and now mm. And there are some ways we can do that. And, and one of them is to maybe listen to sounds. Maybe there is a train outside. It's always here and now, you know, that train or the car outside. You know, be a little slow, mm. you know, because trauma is too much, too fast, too soon. Mm. So you want to be, give it medicine, which is, well, can be slow. Exactly. I can look around, use my eyes to reorient where I am. You know, so I use this also a lot when I do, if I'm going yeah, in front of a big crowd, for example, 
because then, you know, the nervous system can kind of come up, you know. And then to really, if my nervous system comes up, I, I always, you know, really try to go into the room and orient, you know. So my body knows where I am. <laughs> there are no lines here, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I see the faces, you know, and I know where I am. And I'm a little slower if I need to, just for myself. And then I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, my nervous system kind of gets into it. Uh, balance. Well, that's that's a good advice, Lynn. If we were not met while we had or experienced this trauma, and this energy has um, somehow been stuck in your body, how do we work, or how do you work to release this so we can live a more a life in more balance? Uh, well, there are many modalities. You know, mm -hmm. forever for me. Uh, I I, um, I truly believe that we uh, sooner or later need our bodies, you know, the way is through the body. Um, and uh, it's like Peter Levine, you mentioned, you know, he's, he, he, he says that, you know, trauma is not really in our stories, it's in our nervous system, you know, it's a nervous system regulation issue and in our body. So the SC work that he does is really what's going on in the nervous system today yeah. and then, you know so we don't even know we need the whole story if it's not available or remembered you can work on what's happening in the nervous system today yeah so it's it's uh but the development of traumas we need more things but uh i think there's not one way but many and i think it's really important to find your way and, and to learn to trust i i went this way myself and i did a lot of uh, <laughs> choices that were not so good but that taught me to where I was supposed to to go for and I find myself in my own body it's been uh, such a remarkable change yeah. you know mm. uh, such a restoration of goodness and peace and uh, stress tolerance and you know so it's really been, for me it's been and that's what why I teach arm and se because uh, and yoga and meditation because a combination of that mm. and i think also that we can uh, uh, support ourselves with um, good nutrition because it really supports our healing process so what you are saying is that working with our traumas is you can do it by working with your your mind your thoughts uh, your subconscious but you can also work with your nerve systems and To do that, you have to um, to work with your own body. Is that right? Yeah, but I, I think I want to phrase it a little differently, maybe to yeah. um, uh, make it more ex uh, access accessible for yeah. people, more yeah. available for people. Yeah, I think uh, uh, to make it more practical. You know, if, yeah. if there is a trauma, there's a lot of drama going on, dramatic thoughts, you know, common fast, you know, there's a lot of uh, fixation on what's the problems often, you know, in yeah. the, in life. So I think, first of all, to work with your trauma, I think you to work with the balance first, you know, uh, because that gives a foundation to work with the trauma that is much better. So, uh, so really to see, to take in the goodness of life, you know, whatever it is, you know, for a while, give space, notice the small things, you know, small pleasures, build new experience of, of deliciousness in the body and, you know, whatever that is, uh, means for you uh, and, and grow, uh, grow the balance because we have so much red going on. So it's hard to just start to do the red. <laughs> But blue and fill in with blue, uh, and uh, if that's meditation, if that's peace, if that's you know, and then and then uh, uh, then you can uh, make that's that makes you know the work on on whatever remains more available. Yeah. And uh, but I think you know it's also important to know that in in order to get into a room, uh, or get out of a room, you have to get in. So you know you have to. You have to meet it, you know, at mm. some point, but to know that you have the time and give yourself the time you need mm. to uh, to find your way. Because I, I think the body has fantastic wisdom uh, to show what is needed, 
you know, and, and to start finding the trust in that. And to take small steps because, again, trauma is, is too much, too fast, too soon. So small conscious steps is really what grows, um, grows uh, the healing and, and what we get, the small things we discover. And, and we can discover something that we can tolerate ourselves in new ways. And we actually can tolerate our lives, you know, fear and sorrow and find new options, you know. And yes. It's really holding, giving yourself time and, and be curious and yeah. interested. And then it will happen, I think, through God, through the body, <laughs> and guided by the body, but not pushed in the body. <laughs> No, so maybe you will um, this year how it changed your life work with your traumas. Oh, wow, well, yeah, it, it really sometimes I wonder where I'd be at, what I've done without it. I'd probably I'd be at the National Theatre <laughs> still if I, if I hadn't. But it really got me uh, into f focusing on what's really important and, and also valuing life and. Uh, so much deeper, you know. Um, I think it's been a journey to to uh, to um, undo the trauma. I couldn't undo the trauma, but I could discharge the, the stress in my body, which has been really a, a journey through yoga and through uh, through our therapy and understanding what's going on. And uh, I feel like a different person today. And for my heart, you know, you that has healed in a, in a different way. It's more about maturing, uh, I think. You know, uh, a maturing uh, capacity to tolerate my own life as it is. Uh, a growing compassion uh, that has also been very uh, good because I feel like I can also be with other people in a way I, I could never have been before. So, and that sounds beautiful. I mean, what you just described, it seems like you are in uh, in totally balance and enjoy life from where you are and meet the world from a, a warm, nice place inside you. Yeah, it is, uh, I would say it is from a place that do not object to my pain of losing, you know, the loss I had, you know, it's a kind of embracing uh my life as it is you know uh and that uh, is what has grown on the year you know the years mm. yeah. and i think that's important to you know because i just i was um one of the writers on a book that came out this uh, 2017 about post-traumatic growth you know mm. which people don't really talk about because it's not um not so accepted, but there is a side to what we, uh, there is a possibility of, I would say, mature, maturing in, and through a post-traumatic event. Um, and uh, there were some great stories about that. So it doesn't really take away the pain, but it involves also uh, growth and the deepening of the heart that mm -hmm. is uh, experienced by many as very mm -hmm. beautiful as well. And as, as you mentioned in the beginning, we will all face traumas in our lives. So it's about learning how to be with them, transform them, and doing that, be uh, able to live our life with what is. Huh. I, yes, and I think, you know, um, being present, you know, is such a huge tool to be present with our bodies, our lives, because then we get the information to support ourselves, you know, and not run away from the places that uh, are weak within ours or that we need to see. So to be present, we can support our balance with nutrition, with, we can support ourselves if something happens, we can, we, we are not... Um, we are not abandoning ourselves. <laughs> so, so you know, the the chances of traumas are also not so big anymore. We're not so vulnerable for traumas anymore. So we can do a lot by living a good, healthy life. Mm. But a lot of people don't do that, you know, like seven days a week, we just 
question in our bodies and uh, chemistry and we don't know how to support ourselves uh, emotionally you know so bringing awareness from to- moment to moment is a very good tool <laughs> <laughs> it is and i always always ask my my guests to share their best advice but what i hear you saying is that to be to be kind to yourself and there are so many different ways to be that so it's it it might be a, it might be about what what will help you the most because somebody will do yoga somebody will focus on the food somebody will focus there are a lot of stuff or things to to focus on as long as it is to being kind and gentle to yourself it will help you uh yes. Prevent, <laughs> prevent, and 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 uh, release from traumas. Yeah, I think you know. I think that's beautifully said. And I think you know, not to stress with uh, with these things either <laughs> is important <laughs> because then it becomes so many things that also takes us away from ourselves. So I think you know, just to trust that if you are with yourself from moment to moment, you will get the information you need, yeah. and it will come in the timing you need. And at one point, it might be some imbalance in nutrition or you know uh, something else mm. so to just relax <laughs> and, and be present is a good good start yes, it is well lynn i want to thank you very much for for sharing your your story your advice and your wisdom about how to work with traumas for me it was really interesting and thank you very much Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> of course, it is. Uh, it, as a, yeah, I mean, creating amazing. this event is really, really good to spread, to spread that information, and people can have more information, reflections together. It's really good. Yeah, and we are so grateful that that we have this huge support and uh, so many speakers and trainers uh, who will share the wisdom. So once again, thank you for that. To those who are listening, I just want to say, remember that you have access to the day's videos for 24 hours. But if you don't have the time to watch or listen, or if you want to listen and see once again, you can get full access to all the materials for six months. Please visit our website to, to find more information. And for now, I just once again want to say thank you to Lynn. I wish you a nice and warm day. And as well to those who are listening, and remember to shine the light that you are. Goodbye.